What's up, everybody? It's your good friend, Lukey, and I'm back to talk about a golf course that surprised me, Dark Horse in Auburn, California. I didn't really have any expectations going in. It's a designer price point, so I was thinking to myself, is it really a designer price point? It's a Keith Foster course. I didn't know much about him. I guess he was credited with the redesign of the Greenbrier, a golf course like that basically looks like the White House and has some spectacular golf courses. I best know it from the Big Break show on Golf Channel. And I guess he got arrested in 2019 through my research, but I didn't know a ton about it. But this golf course feels like a private country club, and I'd almost assume it was at one point a private country club and then turned into a public course. It has some really unique usage of marshland. And then the back nine is just risk-reward heaven. It has a true three-shot par five that's a double dog leg. It really has every type of golf challenge you'd want on a golf course. The only thing it doesn't have is one of these famous, quote-unquote, famous golf guys that kind of golf architect nerds nerd out over. Or it doesn't have a tour uh, event. That's the only thing that's really holding this course back. Now, for the average person playing this golf course, I will say one of the hardest things about this course is sight lines. So picking the right line off of the tee and your alignment in general, which everyone knows I love to aim my feet to the right if you watch the channel, picking a good line is vital because every errant shot here can be a ball in the water, which is a one-stroke penalty. So not just do you need to hit good golf shots here you need to hit golf shots where the architect intended you to hit them there are a ton of hidden hazards strategic bunkers placed in areas where you're probably going to try to land the ball and then there's holes that almost feel like they're paying homage to some of the great golf holes the 16th hole at dark horse reminds me an awful lot of the eighth hole at Spyglass. And I think that that's what this course kind of taught me was they use the same sand as Pebble Beach. There's a lot of this great aesthetic beauty you get with these high-end golf courses, yet it's this secret course hidden in the mountains of Sacramento that not a ton of people know about. And I think that that's the way they kind of want to keep it. They want to obviously make money but they also want to be this hidden gem and I feel like this golf course and if you're making it through my speech this golf course is for the golfer's golfer if you're an average golfer and you go to play here you might enjoy it you might not it's really beautiful so you probably will enjoy the beauty of it you're going to lose a lot of golf balls but you'll probably enjoy just being out and interacting with this But the person that really, really likes this golf course is going to be the extremely serious golfer, the golfer that travels to play different golf courses, the golfer like myself that wants to play all the great golf courses and then just sit and nerd out about it and kind of talk about the differences between them. This is the golf course for that person. This is a golf course that realistically you could play every so often. You could play it, become a member. It's the golfer's golf course because it offers every type of challenge. One thing that I'm impressed with is their driving range includes top tracer. So you get all the PGA Tour statistics in the driving range. And I think that within a couple of years, Dark Horse is more than likely going to be, once again, a top 100 golf course because it has the design. I think it just comes down to if they have the budget and if people are willing to play it and if they can put enough money into the course, then it will be in that because it has a lot of elements of diff- all different types of golf courses. It just has a lot of elements of great golf. I'm thoroughly impressed. Now, I'm going to do something I've never done on these vlogs. I'm going to start with the back nine because I actually filmed it better than the front nine. I do apologize. didn't film the front nine as good as I could have but I don't think I did a terrible job. I think you tune in to hear these stories and stuff. A couple of housekeeping notes. Also, if you're going to book this course, book online. It's cheaper online, but don't book on a third-party tech company site. Go through the website. 
They have cheaper rates online. Also, it plays one shot longer on most holes because the course is extremely hilly and there's lots of undulations and so forth and so on. The course is narrow. I have to emphasize that. It's a true first shot golf course. If you're not driving the ball well, get ready to play terrible because you need to keep the ball in play and there's a ton of hazards. But what I like about it is it's not the Pete Dye rendition of that where it's just punitive, punitive, punitive. It is more so can you accomplish this goal? There's a hero shot and then there's a a regular shot for the average person to navigate down the hole. I think that's pretty neat. Take 15 to 20 golf balls because you're throwing it on a cart and you don't have to walk it. So take a lot of golf balls and honestly, just enjoy your experience here because for me, I felt kind of like I was in a rush and trying to figure it out and trying to give you guys the best vlogging. And by the end, when I was done with my round, I sat back and I looked at the footage and I said, you know what? This was a really nice golf course and I don't think that I was fully present when playing it. But I know it's going to linger, and I'm going to be very excited to play this course again. Shout out to my good friend. I've met him once, so that makes him a good friend. Double bogey bass for breaking 80 at this course. Not an easy feat, and he played from a tee box one spot behind where I played. So shout out to him because that's a really hard feat. I don't really know what I shot, but I don't think I broke 80. Let's get into the vlog. Okay, dark horse, hole number 10. We're starting backside. A uh, big hill that you tee off from. On this day, the blues were moved up to the whites, so it wasn't really that big of a hill. There's a mound. If you clear that mound in that bunker, you basically have a 40-yard shot into the green. That's one of the strategic bunkers. I just missed a little right, went in the bunker, got really good contact on that. It's all downhill to that green. And you're going to see... Something that I felt all day, which is I felt uncomfortable with my lines on the greens. Actually three-putted that. Now, this is one of the trickiest holes on the golf course. As you can see, it's 545 yards, but it's a dog leg left to start and a dog leg right to finish. I hit a three wood to position myself to hit a five wood. Didn't hit that great, and I'm not going to be a baby here. That's the mogul. You have to... A lot of this hole feels like a hole on bridges in San Ramon. This one was mentally hard because I'm still getting used to my five wood and there were people working on a bunker in front. Not that that's a good excuse, but it's an excuse that I felt. Hit this sand wedge like money. I thought that that had a chance to go in. This is some of the elements that you'll see at the top of this hole. I put that to about maybe five, six feet. Maybe even closer now that I'm looking at it. But the theme of this course was... I could never feel comfortable on a line. I looked up because I was being rude and talking while I was putting, but I just never felt comfortable with the brakes at this course. Snow plowed in for the bogey. This is a drivable par four. My driver was not behaving on this given day, but it still was fine. I missed it a little outright. It didn't get the full distance I was looking for. Just kind of everything that goes out a little right ends up at these cart signs. Tried to hit a lob wedge. And I was just like, ah, uh, probably about three, four feet away from having a shot that went to about two feet. And then very simple chip because it landed, for those tripping, it landed and ran back. Got that for par. This is one of the sickest holes on the course. It's just downhill marshland, two beautiful white sand bunkers, beautiful trees. I hit a pitching wedge into this from the blue-white hybrid tees wind in your face it's just an awesome feeling like i love those type of shots it's just so cool to hit it there put it to about 12 feet got a big nice moon divot in there and like everyone was leaving moon divots because of that and this was the rare made putt on this day and i shocked myself i couldn't believe i made birdie on a super cool hole this hole is amazing this is a hole that i think is in my this is a great design. This is almost like one of my favorite holes in California. Basically like a 270-yard par for trouble down your right. Of course, I aimed to the right in hindsight. Aimed right, hit it into the hazard, and then dropped up here. Couldn't tell where I went in. 
hit a good chip and this just feels a lot like this course gives me the vibes of like a harbor town i feel like i always say the same courses because it's like those are the courses i like so i'm just drawn to it but the views here and the narrow the narrow keep it in play vibe it's pretty awesome so had to settle for a bogey on this hole but not terrible all things considered just really really nice now the next hole this is the hole that really reminds me of spyglass so when you see this it you're hitting over this mound and then you have this super uphill hole it's kind of like hole number eight if i remember my math's right it's spyglass and then you're hitting up the spyglass hill but on dark horse you're just hitting up this hill there's all these white sand bunkers there's a white sand bunker that protects this green I didn't have enough club in my hand, which you guys totally do. And then you just get these delicate chip shots. And I'm sure if I hadn't have played after a rainstorm, they probably would run a little bit more. And that was actually a pretty good effort to give myself about a five, six footer and convert it. So that's a unique way to make par. Here we go. It's another par three really difficult at this course to tell if it's uphill or downhill based on just like the elevation changes that's something i noticed got a little artistic view right here thought people might enjoy it just kind of checking out some of the beauty and the elevation of this course hit a decent chip if i had to hit that better i would have given myself a chance to go in kind of fluffed it a little bit but it's okay then the 17th this is the last two holes at this course really friggin epic they both take advantage of elevation change this is just a really sick tee shot to stand over you're just hitting a driver downhill and if you hit the fairway basically you could run that ball for a very long time it's basically like until you hit the rough is how far your ball will run tried to get a seven iron there it wasn't the club and the rough caught it and then I had a lob wedge and I've really been working on my lob wedges and this went pretty close to the pin and I two putted got a bogey the final hole at dark horse the 18th hole is really a great finishing hole it's very spectacular it's par five dog leg left hazard in front of the green and it's just a really cool hole i got lucky because i actually hit that far but i think it, the rough just stopped that so got pretty lucky there really hit that three wood good and it just landed in the front of the green and the water stopped it so i think it carried about 215 220 and then the water just stopped it when it landed so and not water hazard there was a rainstorm and it just kind of hit that little area and just stopped it didn't land hot because of the water i think that would have been pretty darn close if it was any other day and then kind of a routine up and down just a chip right here gave myself about maybe a three footer and then drained it thank you for watching this vlog I appreciate anyone who contributes or subscribes or even likes a video. This is a passion project and I'm just trying to do the best I can.